the high seas, high seas. Cast my line, now they're biting. Rocky coast and lighthouses, what she knows now I doubt it. Talk to me nice. I think your confusion starts with street lights. Hey Virgo, welcome to January 2020. Happy New Year, happy decade. So, um, I was sitting with your energy just now. I just recorded the Leo reading and I figured, you know, I'm gonna do Virgo today as well. I'm trying to get these videos, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm trying to get the videos out a little earlier this month so we have more time to process what's going on, right? But uh, your card, everybody is showing up quite quickly. I usually, sometimes I sit with a tarot deck and try to connect to a certain zodiac sign and it takes me literally min like 30 minutes, half hours, like hours. Okay, I'm exaggerating, but it takes me a while, but not this month. I think it's just we're all very energetically open to messages and guidance because it's the beginning of a new year, new decade. Like, we're just ready for whatever is, you know, this cycle, this new cycle. So we do have the Hermit. I'm very surprised it showed up so, or not really, but showed up quite, quite quickly and easily. So you guys are ready, right? Ready for your reading. I love you, Virgo. You are my opposite sign. I'm always excited to do readings for you because it always teaches me something different it shows me how to see things in a different way so let's go ahead and see what's going on virgo we're going to see this is your ruling card for those of you who don't know so this is your energy that's my way of connecting with you all and we're going to see what's right behind you okay we have the star we have the star wow aquarius energy here right behind you virgo aquarius hanging out here and if so, if you're dealing with an Aquarius, Virgo, you are looking right at this Aquarius. They may not be looking at you. Um, but wow, these are one of, these are, I love this combination. Hopefully it's the color showing up okay because they're both like light blue. Like what a beautiful energy here. This is um, going to resonate for some of you guys in January to start off the year. This is very important if you're not dealing with Aquarius, if you don't have any heavy Aquarius energy in your chart like moon or rising or Mercury then this is talking about being hopeful this is your destiny this is renewal faith healing energy like i really really love this card okay behind that we have the nine of wands that's very interesting i wasn't really expecting that this is um being defensive like feeling the need to protect something and guard something up but god it's talking about being going through a fucking lot especially you you know because this is someone who God, like they need to keep faith here. Someone here is at the tail end of a, a battle, like you are almost there, kind of like the Ten of Wands, you are fucking almost there. There's a final battle. January may feel like, like a final battle. So my spirit guides are showing me someone who, oh my God, like they've ran, they have like, uh, let's say they have two miles to run and they just completed like the first mile of it. So you're halfway there, but you're li like almost a little over halfway. So there's just something that you need to do one more time, like one one more time here, one more minute, one more time, like I'm almost there. Because of that, you're ready, you're, on, you're in this fighting stance, you know, there may be defensiveness here, but definitely battles that you've been through, and you guys are trying to move away from those heavy energies, like getting to calmer waters, you know what I mean? You're going to have to move away from battles or possibly change going on in, in January, you know, this is huge, Jupiter being in Capricorn fate turning this cycle of the last 10 years you could be dealing with an aquarius taurus leo or uh scorpio here but something's changing here linked to someone who's kind of moving on maybe physically mentally emotionally it's kind of hard to tell in this card because there's a little bit of an indication of all like these people are obviously physically moving on they're obviously emotionally moving on too because they there's there's a sadness here right you can tell by the woman She's not happy about what she's leaving behind, but she is happy about where she's going. You know, you have to leave the old to get to the new Virgo. And then we have mentally leaving behind because we have all the swords here. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. So I don't know I don't know if you guys, um, if there's a battle linked to moving on here or something like that. But please, 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 faith is so huge for you guys. You know, a lot of Virgos, I know you guys were going through it the last couple of months. And I do feel a little bit of a lighter, energetic vibe from you this month in january i think capricorn season came in and really grounded you guys but wow sag season like basically like virgo libra scorpio sagittarius season was very interesting for virgo it seemed i've seen a lot of you guys really going through it like at work and your physical bodies mainly 
but let's go ahead and get into this and see what's really going on um, for you guys. So this is for Virgo, January 2020. Universe, please show me the beginning of January for Virgo. It, how they felt as soon as they came into the new year. Ooh, okay, that has so many cards, but I'm going to take them because this is the Knight of Pentacles. So we have the Knight of Pentacles, the Empress, the Seven of Swords, and the Emperor. So this is like some kind of message for somebody grouped all together here. I'm just going to keep it right here. Bottom of the deck is the Chariot. So we may be dealing with Cancer here. There may be a vehicle that is important. We have the Emperor and the Empress showing up, similar to the Leo reading. As I said, I, di I didn't have to do much shuffling after the Leo reading. And let me just say... Leo and Virgo, they've, they've kind of intertwined. You guys are right next to each other on the Zodiac Wheel. So there may be something going on. Maybe it's because the next full moon is in Leo, and then the next full moon after that in uh, March, will, or yeah, March, I feel, will be in Virgo. But uh, I did a reading for the Gemini full moon last month, yesterday, and I got the same exact message for Leo that I did for Virgo like you guys got the same message and I did do a lot of shuffling in that reading so there is some kind of energetic intertwining of Leo Virgo right now and I'm not sure why um, but I'm mentioning that because Leo just had the Empress and the Emperor and the Seven of Swords I think they had all four of these cards actually in their reading so if you're dealing with a Leo or if you have Leo energy please cross rock watch cross watch jeez um, I don't know if there's any apologies here to a cancer or if there's an investment to or from a cancer, but somebody here has a little bit of anxiety. This may not be for all of you. This looks like a, kind of a, um, a personal message for somebody, but for those of you who resonate, like, I don't know if someone walked away, you have anxiety about them coming back because they were left out in the cold, really trapped in their head. Someone has a lot of anxiety. Someone here is l up late at night thinking about, you know, how to come at this person logically, Okay how to apologize and that could be someone who's thinking about you virgo i don't know but let's continue okay we've got a little bit of a message here that i'll talk about but i'm gonna get a couple more cards okay this is a lot ten of wands ten of pentacles and the high priestess here hopefully you can see all that virgo so let's talk a little bit about how you guys started January because that's what I asked so you guys came into the month with this is four cards So th that tells me that there was way too much going on just for one tarot card to sum it all up Let's we'll start with this knight of Pentacles. This is you This is the reason why I took this message because this is my Virgo could be a Capricorn or a Taurus as well This is just someone who's very reliable very routine based um, They're very very practical and grounded. They don't move as quick as like say the knight of wands or the knight of swords But that's okay, right Virgo because slow and steady wins the race and again I'm being shown somebody I don't know if I mentioned the metaphor a minute ago when I said someone had a mile to run and they, they just finished slow and steady wins the race so there's something here about pacing yourself Virgo going at your own pace huge vibe for you um, regardless of how quick or slow other people are moving like go at your own pace coming into January you're, you're really because Virgos are different when it comes to you guys feeling what is obviously going on in our universe right now these eclipses this World War 3 shit you know I'm very close with a Virgo, and she's been having really deep gut feelings. We've been talking a lot, her and I, about gut feelings. And, you know, you're the opposite of Pisces, so you're definitely linked to spirits and linked to that 12th house of ending. So Virgos are definitely spiritual. So if you're cross-watching for a Virgo, please know that, you know, you guys are getting the high priestess. They're getting the high priestess, so they definitely know. They have gut feelings as well. You guys are ruled by Mercury, so you're able to analyze that kind of stuff. So yeah, we have some kind of slow movement here. This is basically a statue, okay? I, I see a little bit of good and bad here, pros and cons, a little bit of a two of a pinnacles vibe, meaning that you, you got to weigh out the pros and cons of being slowed down. In some ways, it's better. In some ways, you know, it may agonize you. It, it depends on how you guys feel. You know, it's a new cycle. It's a new year in... A lot of us feel a little bit like, okay, any time now, but some of us are like, holy shit, things are moving so fast, like, can you slow down? So, I don't know. It's just about being practical, though. This is typical of you, Virgo, though. This is literally, if you guys read on this card, it talks so much about Virgo routine, being practical, working really hard, making sure you, you keep up every day. Like, there's no day that you don't show that amount of effort, you know, you keep at it. That's why it's a little bit of a Capricornian energy as well. And it could be Capricorn season that is making you guys even more so this energy. You know, Capricorn is a sister sign to you guys. This is Earth energy. The last time we had Earth in our universe was Virgo season, like four months ago, right? 
So you're, you're feeling grounded again um, and practical. Capricorns really ask Virgo to work because you, you know, it's interesting. Capricorn is more so the career and the legacy. And then Virgo is the lifestyle and, and just, you know, your, your day to day job. Um, but Capricorn is like, I always asks Virgo, like, how can what you are, how can you as a mutable earth sign take all those changes and adaptability and stretch it out into the long term? Like, is what you're doing every day, Virgo? paying off and this is something I should be talking about for the Capricorn new moon video that I'm gonna do soon um, but it's just interesting to see you know Capricorn and, and Virgo that in energy of this season affecting you guys now let's move on here because we already know you moved in kind of slow you guys were a little hesitant you know moving a little maybe there was little to no movement coming into the new year right you're just being practical about things because you guys know that there's a lot going on energetically people don't really feel how they feel right now with these eclipses um they're also not really communicating exactly what they want to communicate with clarity so virgos are just being very very logical about this and analyzing things as they come to you guys in physical form that's the only way you can really trust something right now but then we have this energy right here and this is going to just be for some of you guys so don't worry i'm not predicting anything i'm picking up on energy that is already that already exists so we have a mother and a father figure here okay the empress is a beautiful woman this is usually like a taurus or a libra heavy venus energy here venus is in aquarius virgo right now so this could be you as a mother this could be your mother or a mother figure like a grandmother a sister even but it's a wife it's like husband and wife here but wow king of all kings queen of all queens these two people have an empire when the empress and the emperor show up, I do talk about like, you know, mother, father stuff because it's literally the, the father of all, the mother of all. Father God and mother God there. And it is Venus and Mars as well. So divine feminine, divine masculine. It's similar to like a king and a queen showing up together, like the king and the queen of pentacles or swords. You know what I mean? It's obviously a match. But these two people are different. Or the tarot cards would have had like some kind of they're not just queens they haven't just mastered something they are literally the they they reside over it okay but what about this little guy in the middle there okay we have the seven of swords so there is this energy of maybe sneaking lying cheating trying to get away with something and I feel like it's the divine masculine that is doing that so you're gonna have to identify this is for those of you who are hip to twin flames and stuff you know all of us have feminine and masculine energy but just because of the way this is looking like this the seven of swords is looking back at this emperor so i don't know if there's a father figure here that is linked to like this energy like i said virgo this is typically trying to get away with some it's that sneaky energy you are the high priestess though so you're gonna most likely pick up intuitively on anything that is like not true right now um but i do want to say the seven of swords is just about having to plan something without being noticed like this could easily be like when you throw a surprise party for someone or when you when you're about to propose to someone you have to take on the energy of the seven of swords because you have to do something in an incognito kind of way so there is <clears throat> excuse me there is this energy between some kind of mother father um divine feminine divine masculine it, it could be a third party we're gonna have to see some of you guys, there's this practicality as a mother, as someone who's pregnant, as someone giving birth to something. If you're not a mother or pregnant, the the temperance, or, ooh, temperance, what? So Sagittarius? Whoa. Okay, that must have been a synchronicity. But, because my computer is going off and saying all kinds of crazy stuff. I don't know what's going on here. My computer is freaking out. But what was I saying? Oh, I was I was meaning to say the Empress. I don't know if anyone has a Sagittarius mom or something or if this is important with Sagittarius, but this is creation. Okay, trying to create something. And keep in mind, this could be self-deception as well. Someone who's trying to take something from you is that theft energy. So just be careful, okay? And, and I don't want to spend too much time on this message. It, it's very important though. You guys, I feel, are going to know if you resonate with that. But I'm just saying, there, there's an emperor here. If you're dealing with Aries, Libra, Taurus, they're linked to, you know, just going behind the scenes trying to get away with something, trying to strategize. Someone here may take something from a father figure or something like that, keep something from a father figure. And it's coming right towards this woman of abundance, this pregnant, feminine, fertile woman, or this mother figure. Okay, guys? But there is a little bit of energy of just having to move slower because of something you're trying to give birth to or create. Someone here is has a very practical heart. Someone here has Venus and Virgo. Maybe Venus and Aries, because I do see that. Or they may have Venus and Taurus or Capricorn. 
but they move slower at a heart level okay this is about waiting for something to manifest as well like using practicality now let's move on here to this ten of wands and this ten of pentacles wow talk about a decade ending virgo ten of wands is all about lowering down a burden something heavy and you know it's similar to that nine of wands we were talking about this is all about hard work you are literally all wherever this person is taking these ten of wands this burden they are literally five feet away from being able to put them down but wow isn't that like when it's the heaviest of all kind of like that metaphor that i keep seeing about someone running on a track or something like that's just the energy my spirit guys keep telling me because it is a cycle you know running in a track is it's different than a running in place like a treadmill or on a treadmill this is a track and i guess it's because it, when i was in high school i used to do this and man it would kill me to run one mile around that track it would kill me I didn't realize how big those things were like far away it's like no problem you know I could run around that but it's a mile half of that circle is half a mile so when I would reach like half that circle there would be something that happened in me like okay like I can I can do this just it's just I, I need to do what I just did one more time and I'll be done so there's that energy here of like just really almost reaching some kind of finish line okay slow and steady wins the race though virgo and it's like there's some kind of burden here when it comes to a career a financial like endeavor financial fulfillment you guys are carrying a lot of weight or somebody around you is there's a lot of burdens here when it comes to like commitment this is that capricorn energy the 10 of earth this is the 10th house of earth to me family um you know home environment stuff job stuff just financial fulfillment and the weight there of that but bottom of the deck is you know changing your perspective about something the hanged man there's little to no movement here as well but wow we have the lovers so you guys are changing your perspective about love and connection you may have a choice that you're trying to make um and this is like having to make a choice and wherever you are in life virgo things are kind of turned upside down so even if you've analyzed this before this connection or this decision it's like you're, you're having to make it in conflict now you're having to make it with tension you're having to make it and, and all eyes are on you is t too like someone's watching this battle here and you could be dealing with a leo or you're just trying to tame yourself hold yourself back but yeah there's definitely not this is neptune energy neptune is in your seventh house of relationships virgo it's not retrograde anymore but please know this is a message about neptune in in your seventh house of relationships and there's decisions okay but we have the high priestess follow your intuition okay let's get to the second half and then we'll know more about this but so far it looks like there's a something heavy that's financially burdening you it might have to do with a home there may even be like a some kind of expense the first couple weeks of january in your home that is heavy like this is like a hundred dollars you know maybe more it's definitely at least a hundred dollars though and i feel like that's being like nice about it because this could be several hundred dollars like a hundred ten times which is a thousand right so i don't know if this is a thousand dollars or something like that that may be important but there's just a burden it's a heavy heavy burden it's like this is about your future and your long term like this is capricorn energy and we'll come back to this high priestess could be pisces or cancer this may be the, the the full moon eclipse that takes place in cancer that may be but all of this on the table is up for enlightenment like you're becoming enlightened to all this your relationships your home your job your future your long-term career what else do we have for Virgo? Second half of January, though. Give me the second half. So after the 15th. After the 15th, what's going on? Okay. Out comes the Strength card and the Six of Wands. So although there is this energy of taming something, you know, we have Leo here verbatimly. But this is the, the Divine Feminine. Interesting. She's taming something here. But there's someone here is holding their self back from victory or um, maybe... Something's holding you back from some kind of promotion here, Virgo. Something's holding you back from um, being acknowledged. Like, what what or who is holding you back, I wonder? Is this you? Because someone here, there's something in your life over here with the strength card that has got you occupied, you know, busy taming something, being held back. There's going to need to be confidence and strength and bravery. Maybe you guys are being held back by, like, doubt or something because this is obviously going to put you in the center of attention, okay? And that's interesting. There may be a Leo here that likes to be the center of attention it's interesting but we have an admirer here that may be leo we also have scorpio at the bottom of the deck somebody may have mercury and scorpio because i saw the magician and the death card but there is there's some kind of magical ending here and it has everything to do with that nine of wands that we had okay this there's an ending there's change someone here is going through transformation 
and you're moving on to calmer waters because of this transformation. It's a lot better than battling with this pain. It may be physical pain, Virgo. When I see the Ten of Swords, you could have pain all down your back. There could be headaches. There could be chakra-related pain, like spine. So if you have any pain alongside your back, please um, identify what chakra is in around that pain. Like if it's lower back pain, it might be like root chakra or something. And I'm telling you, you can find ways to heal your chakra, which will therefore help your pain. But this has been a battle. Like, there, this is an ending here. The battle is over. The race is over. And, yeah, you guys are moving. Ooh, you guys are moving on to calmer waters. I, I meant to uh, show you this card. And we have the two of swords here. So there's some kind of decision. Let's get the, the very end of January, and then we'll talk, Virgo. Okay, what's going on for the end of January, like the last week, the last four, three, two, one days right here, please, for Virgo, January 2020, the last, you know, few days of the month of January. Show me the last few days of January 2020 for Virgo. Now, there may be a significant sacrifice or change of view, because I see an indication of the man again but we have the king of wands and the fool so there is a new beginning with a leo someone with leo energy we have a message coming in here at the end of the month something very quick this is when things are going to move very fucking quick okay this is communication this is air travel for some of you but it has something to do with a job work some of you guys there's been um time off work with the four of swords you know you've been needing to get rest or virgo you fucking need to make sure that you're getting your rest and healing, okay? Some of you guys have been praying and meditating for financial guidance because some of you have two different ways of making money, okay? Right here, you're juggling two different jobs or there's financial stress because somebody's out of work. There may be a choice to make when it comes to like, this is coworkers, this is a plan, this is a contract, but there is some kind of decision, financial stress, you're trying to make ends meet. And we do have a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio woman, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius woman here. Somebody with air and water, like, but this to me is about clarity, especially if you have a child. There's Leo Aquarius here. This may be Aquarius season, but wow, somebody here is being very mature emotionally and mentally. And this might be about getting back together after somebody moved on. Leo energy here again, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. There definitely might be a Scorpio related to this. This is happening in the future, though. For those of you guys who left a relationship or haven't spoke to someone in a long time, there may be an emotional reuniting here with the Two of Cups. There may be a decision here between two people as well, especially if you're dealing with air and water. But this is maybe you. If you're a woman watching, this could be both at both aspects of you. I mean, anybody can take on. Oh, I just saw two, 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 and that was a comp, that was an energy in Leo's reading two, 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 and I saw my camera here that it's two, 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 two just a moment ago. So, you guys are trying to heal. Um, when it, it's like compassion, okay, being a little bit less cold and, and being more compassionate and open emotionally here, this is what's healing about you. Or there could be a water sign here that you haven't seen in four days, four weeks, a month, whatever. But back to this message here, there's definitely someone here that, yeah, you know, this could easily be time off work and, you know, just financial stress when it comes to like everybody working together here. But I feel like the end of the month is going to be when things move very quickly. You're going to have to stand up for yourself. There may be some kind of battle or argument at work. There may be something going down, okay, for somebody at work or something. We have Gemini energy here, Libra, Aquarius, but something is said very quickly. Somebody charges in, stands up for themselves, says something really quickly. It might be an argument. I feel like with these two energies, whoops, no, it's these two. With these two energies, somebody stands up for themselves and says something, and it's about work. Maybe it's a coworker or some kind of plan. It might even be, for others of you, if it's not at a, a job, it's about, you know, financial stress that you have. Um, you know, financial stress may be a third party for some of you guys. Someone just says something really quickly here. And, wow, okay, back at the Eight of Wands. So, yeah, there's a message. That this is uh, the internet, so it could be a text message or an email or something that this argument is happening. Or this may, that may start it all off. Let's get one more card for Virgo. For the end of January, I guess it's this one. Oh, wow, really? Okay, so bottom of the deck is the Four of Cups, telling me that this whole reading has something to do with emotional availability or lack thereof. Okay, it has something to do with emotional contemplation, contemplating about how you feel, Virgo, options coming in that you may be ignoring, there may be missed opportunities. We'll come back to that here um, in a moment. 
But first, let's talk about the end of your January, okay? Because we know that you're being held back or something from a promotion or maybe qualities of yourself. Maybe you're just taming yourself. You don't really like the attention right now, the admiration, because there is an admirer here. You did, There's something here about being held back from being acknowledged for something. Because the Six of Wands is all about being acknowledged. Like this person is literally on their high horse. They're being recognized and acknowledged for their hard work. And, and this is like... It's acknowledgement and it's victory. This is a small victory here, but we have the two of swords. So there's a decision that someone is not making. Keep in mind, there could be Aries, Pisces, Cancer, um, Leo, but any zodiac sign, right? Taurus, Libra, heavy Venus energy. All right. Uh, decision that someone is not making. This is Aquarius, new moon. So around the 25th, 26th of the month, there may be like, there's some kind of action that you're really thinking about taking or someone's thinking about taking. This is an Aries maybe a Sagittarius Leo man as well but this is an energy of confidence you know victory like being a leader like there's definitely something you want to express there's something you want to get up and do and it's like a risk like you want to jump in and do this take this action just go ahead and do it but it's interesting this king of wands this person of action this person of vision you know they're indecisive about the action they want to take okay there's two different actions here someone is not taking action or someone has not been taking action for quite a while and by the end of January there's like all right let's just do it let's just go ahead and do it let's just charge in it's kind of like the knight of wands it's kind of like a knight of wands when you put the fool and the, the the king of wands together so the problem is that someone here is mature and they don't like to rush in without thinking so they've definitely been thinking here we have a crescent moon here right and we also have a crescent moon on this high priestess so you know there are certain things that are secretive this month like you may be keeping keeping it in it might not be revealed to you until like the new moon or the eclipse but i just feel like the new moon is important here to follow your intuition when it comes to this decision virgo gut decision here you know we were talking about the gut gut instincts at the beginning of this reading so if you want to take an action if there's some kind of new beginning here with an aries leo sag or if you're not dealing with a fire sign you just want to kind of leap into new action new leadership it's like in order to do that you're waiting on someone to make a decision Okay, somebody here is being held back by indecision, and what it's doing is, it's like stalling this victory, okay? And maybe there's something that needs to be sorted out up here first with the Seven of Swords, but bottom, or not bottom, but last card of the month is the Tower. So this tells me that there is a little bit of something at the end of January that you don't see coming, literally, it comes right underneath the High Priestess. So again, we have Moon and Mars energy, I don't know if it was you or... Leo that I mentioned this for, but Leo also got this fucking message. Leo is in your reading. And let me tell you, Virgo showed up up here for um, the Leo reading. So please, guys, I can't say it enough. Leo and Virgo. If I were you, I would just watch the Leo reading because there's something about Leo energy that has some, some kind of message for you, even if you're not dealing with a Leo. Like they're your 12th house on the Zodiac Wheel. Technically, Virgo is evolved Leo, just like Libra is evolved uh, Virgo. Okay, but we have Mars and the moon. Someone here may have Pisces, Mars, uh, Cancer, Mars. So there may be a bit of a passive aggression energy that needs to take place here. Or maybe someone here is just taking action in a secretive way. That might be why the Seven of Swords. You're not really revealing to everybody. Oh, wow. I didn't know that this could be a boss. Okay, that's one last message for somebody there that, that's going to tie it all in for them. Because we have a boss here in like a promotion especially if there's like any Aries Leo energy okay when it comes to this promotion or something or attention or being just simply being acknowledged like this is a congratulations like a prom uh, I keep wanting to say promotion but um, there's another word like acknowledgement and something else I can't think of but it's like it hasn't been decided yet it's holding I don't think this is your decision Virgo you know what I mean I don't I think that this is Something that you're literally waiting on, like a gate to open up for you. Like, yes, the word yes or something. This is maybe. This is a yellow light. So it's like not yes or no. It's more of a slowing down. And it's like you're waiting for this new beginning of action. And I do see Aries, Leo, Sagittarius men linked to this for you guys. So yeah, this may be something about a boss. I don't know if there's some kind of strategy as a boss. You may be your own boss, Virgo, entrepreneur here. But this is authority, you know, be very careful of um, power abuse, abuse of power, because this is someone manipulative and controlling. Keep your eye out, okay, for that kind of energy as a boss or, or with your boss, because we just had all that work energy come up. You know, this might be 
something going on at work for sure you know capricorn is definitely going to reveal that to you guys and keep in mind you know you're going through fifth house energy that's romance soulmate energy creativity with capricorn and then in aquarius season you guys are going through sixth house so that's going to be very important for you because aquarius is six houses away from you and virgo you are the sixth house on the zodiac wheel so that energy of routine job you're going to be going through that your life is about to change okay and you don't even know it it's, it's happening behind the scenes but you have intuitively felt in your gut that things have been behind the scenes shaking you felt this pressure cooker of the eclipse okay this could very well be the eclipse but this is mars mars is in sagittarius and it's like the the very tail end this could be literally january 31st for some of you guys or the end of january whatever january 30th there's some kind of new beginning we have uranus and mars and the moon here those are the planets showing up for you virgo but yeah there's something that some kind of secret some kind of shocking secret that comes out you want to follow your intuition about it but it's also a new beginning this is not a bad card you know this is the universe coming in to change something for you it probably has something to do with your lifestyle, Virgo, um, because you're going through sixth house energy. But wow, this is like the decay of a false foundation. So whatever happens, whatever you're struck with at the end of January, please know that it is in the name of, you know, rebuilding something better. Now, let's take a real quick look here at the bottom of the deck. We have the four of cups. So some of you guys, there's missed opportunities here. This is you or someone else who's really emotionally contemplating, very focused, hardcore on these three cups. Those three cups represent, you know, maybe a friendship or maybe a third party situation. It's just three things you feel, something that's got your attention emotionally. You're contemplating about it and it's like you're focused on what you want. And there's there's some something similar to that trying to come in from a very strange place. This is like a mini ace of cups. It's a new opportunity and someone here may be a little bit emotionally unavailable for it. You know what I mean? This is about your foundation. You're really not sure. So this may be a missed phone call, missed text messages. Hey, Virgo, you want to come out so-and-so on this date? And you're like, mm, I'm already doing this. Mm, my attention's already here. Like, So it's up to you whether you're missing these opportunities willingly or if you're ignoring them willingly. This has something to do, though, with the Five of Pentacles, feeling left out in the cold, right? Feeling really trapped inside your head about some kind of new direction that's going to be opening up. Okay, financial conflict. Someone here may really feel homeless. Someone here may be in jail or prison, but the Eight of Swords is temp it's a temporary prison. It's someone here is there's self imprisonment here. And I hate to say that, Virgo, but there is self imprisonment here. So you want to identify the ways of thinking that that keep you here willingly on your own in this place of poverty or loss or you know abandonment whatever it might be get out of your head about it out of the out of this financial conflict i don't know if this is about a job or something because we have the five of pentacles but there is a new path oh wow real quick here we have a soulmate and a twin flame from the past we have the judgment card so there's going to be second opportunities and phone calls memories okay this is marriage so there is memories here there's a house with two children in it for some of you guys but there's just some kind of awakening going on, like your past is calling Virgo and there's commitment, home environment, celebration here with a soulmate or a wedding or something. But all of this has something to do with that's after you choose some kind of path, okay? And get out of your head and, and get out of abandonment and out of the cold, okay? But this whole reading, the whole January has something to do with a missed opportunity or, you know, emotional availability somebody here is just not open for these options okay that's why they they just aren't answering the phone or they're not messaging back or something you or someone else this is interesting virgo so this is what i have for you guys let me know if this resonated please let me know this month okay um if you have any questions please comment below and if you would like a personal reading get to my email and look in my um, description box for that we can talk about the reading you would like i am doing monthly readings so if you would like to look at a whole month for yourself personally, I am doing that now. Um, we can look into February. If you want to look into the future, we can look into March. You know, energy is fluid. So let me know, guys. Um, I'm wishing you a very happy start to the new year and the new decade. And I will talk to you guys in February. Bye.